Welcome back. This episode, we're going to be talking about tachyons, uh, mostly seen in Star Trek, but they are theoretical particles that I'd like to talk a little bit about that, and then I'll talk about where we see them in Star Trek, because that's where we see them the most. Advantage. Each ship will send out an active tachyon beam to the other blockading ships. Now, in theory, any cloaked vessel that attempts to pass between our ships must cross that beam and be detected. I recommend maybe watching the video on space time because that could help. Um, but, you know, like always, uh, you can stick with me. If you get confused, check out those other ones or send me a question. So, tachyons are a theoretical particle. Basically, it's the idea that we have all of our equations for space time and we have all these particles that exist within that and it all makes sense and it's all happy. Um, but what if we inversed it? So, basically, what if you had a particle or an area that existed only faster than the speed of light. So one way to think about it is when we talk about matter and mass of any particles are going to be slowly bending space time, tachyons would be the opposite of that. They actually, any presence of uh, a tachyon particle would invert space time. So it would be bumped up a little bit and they always travel faster than the speed of light. So you could kind of picture it like um, if you have, you know, a heavy, uh, if you're going surfing or you're in the ocean, something like that, um, when you're kind of in the crest of the wave and you're having to work your way through, you can picture that as regular matter. And then uh, riding the crest of the wave where you're propelled and you're not having to do any work, you could imagine that being like the tachyons. The only difference is, is that they're a, just their presence makes a wave, um, that they're able to ride faster than the speed of light. So that's kind of the concept behind tachyons. Now, the, there's a few issues with this. Um, one is the concept of causality. So in all the rules that we come up with, with general relativity and space time, one of the things that is an output of that is a concept of causality, because anytime we do an action, uh, that action and the consequences get propagated and the fastest that those consequences can happen is at the speed of light. So, I mean, easiest example is I shine a light somewhere, someone further away sees that light. Um, that them seeing it was a consequence of me turning it on. And if they see a light before I turn mine on, then you know that it can't be from me. So that's kind of this concept of causality. And again, that's all predicated that matter lives on the surface of space-time in a normal way. So you have, for example, a point A, and you have point B and point C. Now point B is within the light cone, which means that point B could be caused by point A, but point C is outside the light cone. So again, you imagine my analogy of someone seeing a light shown at them. Um, if they see it after I turn my light on, then it could be the light from me. But if they see a light before I turn my light on, then there's no way that that's my light. It seems really obvious, but this is something that we need to think about. So tachyons live outside of the light cone, which screws up causality. But this is the thing that I like about Star Trek, is that actually kind of factors it in. Because tachyons are a byproduct in Star Trek of breaking the laws of physics. So you have the, you know, temporal laws, um, the laws of time travel that you can't screw up. And anytime people kind of time travel or jump somewhere that breaks physics, they always talk about a byproduct of tachyons, which I kind of like. It's the idea that, um, Maybe we can build the technology to break the laws of physics, but there's going to be a result from that, and that's going to be tachyons. So anytime that they have temporal issues, then tachyons are a byproduct. They also talk about tachyons being a byproduct of transporter technology, which I kind of like, because again, might not necessarily be a temporal issue if you transport at the speed of light, but the whole idea of breaking down um, so transporters have their own issues with quantum laws, and so possibly the idea of breaking those laws would result in tachyons as well, which I kind of like. So that's just a super quick overview of what tachyons are, um, some of the issues with them, and then where we see them in Star Trek. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>